Okay, we are in here in the, the madhouse that is the MGM Grand this weekend for the, the Floyd Mayweather Canelo Alvarez fight. Uh, Mia, first of all, just your thoughts on this environment and uh, what's going on here. Well, it's been a madhouse. Um, just absolutely crazy. I mean, the way in was just, it was crazy. But it was so much fun, and I'm so excited that boxing can still bring this much attention and make this much money. I mean, it's just, it, it's unheard of today in boxing. So I'm really happy and, and looking forward to tomorrow night. Yeah, that was actually my next question. You know, a lot of people want to say that boxing's dead. Um, you know, if they're here, uh, what, what would those people have to say about this environment? Well, it's crazy. I mean, you, you can't have a guy making 40-something million a fight for this fight and say that boxing de is dead. Somebody's buying those tickets, right. so somebody's tuning in. So boxing is clearly not dead. There's no way. Well, now you're a unique person to ask because you know you've been in boxing for for a while, but you've also dabbled in MMA, and everybody wants to compare boxing and MMA. Say MMA is passing boxing. Um, could MMA <laughs> approach anything like this? I don't think MMA. I don't think there's anyone in MMA making as much as Floyd Mayweather, as much as this fight. So I, I know that as far as their smaller fights, they might be getting more attention, more publicity, but. As far as the big fights, um, boxing still has that. Now, as far as the women go, it seems like women women's boxing is having a really tough time. And a lot of the top names, Holly Holmes, Jessica Ricosi, uh, folks like that, they're starting to you know, either abandon boxing altogether or uh, do a little bold. Uh, you know, what do you think women's boxing can do to, to kind of turn themselves around and and get back a uh, forefront. Well, you know, only the fans can answer that. It's like trying to figure out why the WNBA doesn't get as much play as the NBA. Um, we don't know. Ask the fans. Why don't the fans tune in to see women's boxing? They've had plenty of chances um, because Fox Sports Net has showed women fights, um, ESPN. I and mean, then, of course, me and Christy, when we were on the pay-per-view cards, um, why don't the fans tune in? We don't know. Why don't the fans show up at Staples Center when, you know, the Sparks are playing versus yeah. the Lakers? But whereas, like, the WNBA has never really taken off in the beginning. It's had its niche following. But, like, right. women's MMA has kind of really built momentum lately. Whereas boxing, you know, went back, you know, maybe when Layla Ali kind of had it, but it's kind right. of gone the other way. So, yeah. Even women's MMA, I mean, can Ronda Rousey hold her own hard, continue to do that? That's going to be tough. I mean, there's not even enough women for her to fight right now that anyone knows, right? So you have one famous female that people can think of, Ronda Rousey. That's one. I mean, okay, so it, it, even that hasn't passed boxing because we've been where she's already at. We've already been there, done that. Right. Me, I did it, Chrissy Martin did it, Leila Ali did it. Okay, she's doing it now for MMA. Okay, big deal, we already did that. Right. <laughs> you you did MMA yourself, you dabbled in a little bit. What did you think of it? Did you enjoy it? You know, I it, it's a very, um, it's a tough sport. It requires a lot of skill. I did one fight, I knocked the girl out in like, 45 seconds, um, and I went back to boxing because boxing is my, my real love. Um, I learned that boxing is far more dangerous because in MMA I went home every night with bruises, bumps and bruises, and you know my legs, my arms, which is nothing. But with boxing you go home with concussions, you go home with serious brain damage that you, that you sustain for day after day after day for years and years and years. That's why so many fighters get pugilist dementia. Um, and you don't see that in MMA. So MMA is far safer. Uh, so I don't know, what does that have to say for boxing? <laughs> that um, it's a dangerous sport, but we all know that. Now you'd mentioned Leila Ali, Chrissy Martin. Um, you're kind of the last of the the, the female superstars, I guess, uh, well, Holly Holm having left the sport. Um, you decide, are you 
carrying on or, or what's next for you? You know, I, I deliberately went on ESPN a month ago, a couple months ago, and I retired. Because I wanted... But we know I, how boxers I wanted, are. Right? I, I wanted to put it out there. Like, oh. okay, I'm retiring and that's it. I'm not coming back. But I've retired nine times. And um, I ran into Lou Savory at a signing in Houston last week. And he said, well, you got nothing on me. You got two more to go. Because I retired 11 times. I was like, oh, phew, I can come back. <laughs> so, yeah, I've been thinking about, like, maybe, maybe having one more fight. Um, I'm not sure yet, though. Why do boxers have such a difficult time? Especially you, because it seems like you've got other things going. You know, some some people maybe that's all they have, but it seems like you you have other interests. So, so why is it so hard for boxers and yourself to? I have, yeah, I have a lot of other things, you know, going on. I mean, I wrote a book, I put out workout DVDs, and I started my own foundation. So there's a lot that that keeps me busy. But like every fighter, it, it's all we know. I started when I was six years old, and I'm 46 right now. So it's the only real, it's my livelihood. It's the only job I've ever known. I didn't, I went straight from the amateurs of Taekwondo to pro boxing. So it's always been how I've made my living. And just like a lot of fighters like Tommy Hearns and Ray Leonard. And so if that's all you know, and you, you thrive off the fans and that recognition and being in the ring, uh, and when that ends, it's a really tough pill to swallow. Right. Like, okay, now what do I do? And that's why so many fighters go back. So it's not that, like, I have a college education. So it's not that I'm not educated, but we've learned that, that way of life, that we live off that. We thrive off that. And without it, we feel kind of lost. And then the, the last thing, just a million dollar question, we're here. I don't even have to probably even tell you what the question is. Yeah. How's it going to play out? You know, I, I want so much for Canelo to win because, you know, he's from Guadalajara and my family's two hours from there in Huchipila. So, as a Mexican, like, I, I, I of course want him to win. I just think he, he's too young. He's not polished enough like Mayweather is. May, Mayweather's just a very technical, very polished, refined fighter. And I, I think he'll win. He'll take the fight. Um, Oh, but I'm just hoping for that that one like lucky punch that maybe Canelo will take the fight. You know, you never know. It's boxing; exactly. it could happen. And I have one more question: This Devin Alexander guy, what do you think of him as a fighter? Well, <laughs> I was. You know what's so funny <laughs> is I I was just told about him today. I was standing at the at the weigh-in for the parade of champions, and uh, my friend said, "Do you know who that is in front of us?" <laughs> But you know, I'm, I'm like from the 90s, so I was like, oh, yeah, I didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> What do you think of this lady? <laughs> he says it all. All right, well, Mia, thanks. Uh, Thank enjoy you. the fight, and okay. thanks for another appearance, Devin. We'll see you all this weekend. Thank you. Thank you.